Right. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the special council meeting of Marlin Council on this day, the 10th of January. Uh, attendance is apologies and approved of the absences. Um, Councillor Skinner is a, an apology, and we've had a request from Councillor Vandeleur to attend electronically. So, someone would like to make a motion, Councillor Maslin. Councillor Lane, will you second of that? All those in favour, no. and Councillor Cockrell is an apology as well. Thank you. Uh, public question time. Do we have any questions from the public? Councillor Vandeleur, you can unmute yourself if you wish. I'll take some. Oh, yeah. I'm using that. Can you guys hear me? Yep. yep. Thank you. So, uh, I've already asked public questions. I'm, 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 not, I'm not getting a lot of the audio from you guys. I'm getting a, it's, a, it's a bit distorted. I think when it's more than. Yeah, it's just when it's just more than one person speaking, then yeah. Right, well, I'll speak up and see if that helps. Um, that was a lot better. I got that very clearly. Great. Public, I've, I've asked public question time. There's no questions from the public. Declarations of interest. Are there any declarations of interest, councillors? There being no, we'll move right along. Items for discussion. Uh, did we have. <laughs> so, yeah, okay. So we've got, we've got a deputation from the development team for, for the peer. So we'll go straight to that if we can. Thank you, uh, councillors. Can you all hear me? Yes. Yep. Yep. Yes. Thank you, um, and good afternoon. My name is Matt Kane. I'm an associate planner at Planning Solutions. We act on behalf of the, the proponent of the proposed mixed-use development. Um, I've got one of our client representatives here today, uh, Mr. Delati. He's uh, the proponent and has engaged us to assist in the, the application process. Um, we're pleased to, to receive the Shire's uh, RAR recommended uh, responsible authority report and the recommendation for conditional approval. And we certainly thank the Shire's officers for their consideration and assessment of the application. Um, most of the conditions, as noted in my presentation summary provided to the Shire earlier today, uh, were generally acceptable too. We did have uh, one of Ray's issue and, and make note of two particular conditions that have been noted in the RAR, um, condition I and condition one um, regarding the term of approval. This provides for a, a two year term of development approval uh, to substantially commence the development, which um, whilst might be acceptable for a small scale development, a, a development of this size is generally afforded a minimum term of four years. That's also consistent with the planning and development regulations or the DAP regulations, um, whereby any development assessment panel application should be afforded a, a minimum four year term of approval. So, I'd request the council uh, amend the uh, condition one to read um, it's valid for a period of four years from the date of approval. Uh, that's the first modification we'd see. That's relatively straightforward. The, the second one relates to condition four regarding the cash in lieu uh, that has been requested by the Shire's officers. Um, effectively, in short, that the Shire's officers are seeking that a cash in lieu payment be provided for the provision of 19 days prior to occupancy of stage one. Um, and that cash in lieu contribution is effectively to be calculated in alignment with the WAPC calculation requirements. Um, 
we've gone through an assessment process and we've tried to work with these shires officers on the development as, as much as possible. One of the things that was requested from us was a, a parking demand assessment. And we, due to play, um, our client due to play, accepted this request to, to demonstrate parking for the site uh, and engage Shawmac as a traffic consultant to undertake this assessment. Um, effectively, what the, the assessment does is it considers um, eight parking periods, considers parking required for any time of day, considers it a different type of land use and a potential occupancy rate, and it generates a, a figure um, effectively for an overall bay required based on commercial parking. That uh, assessment that was provided to the Shire's officers noted that, that the peak period is going to be basically 12 and 1 o'clock and the midday parking uh, period, uh, where the most number of bays potentially going to be required on site. That's 97 bays uh, based on the commercial component. And what we originally had was a 100 bay development. Um, the client recognised that 100 bays definitely may have provided some uh, shortfall of parking on the site and subsequently added an additional parking level to the parking structure, taking the overall parking to 143 bays. Now that's a significant portion, 46 bays more, or around 50% more parking than what's potentially going to be required at the peak period based off the Shawmap reporting. One thing I've just noted on that reporting, and it's evident in the, the officer's report under the parking assessment, is that the Shire's officers have determined parking demand and they've looked at it and recognised that for the short stay in the hotel, uh, effectively a rate of 60% occupancy has been considered and similarly for the other commercial aspects a 50% occupancy rate has been considered to determine the parking required for the development. What the uh, Shawmac report doesn't do is it doesn't aside from the hotel discount those parking rates and the demand requirements. It looked at for the hotel uh, the upper end of the potential um, occupancy rate being 80%. If we take a uh, similar approach to what the Shire's officers have done, we'd actually find that the demand for overall bays will reduce quite considerably. Around 20 bays would be lost based off those reductions that the officers have uh, provided in their assessment. So we feel that the parking demand is actually greater than potentially what may be required on site regardless. Notwithstanding that part of a planning assessment and a planning application, you could, should consider the merits of the application and then consider what other means of transport, what other on-street uh, available parking is provided, or reciprocal arrangements. As I've set out in my presentation summary, um, the, the Shire's assessment doesn't seem to consider the available off-street parking, um, which by my calculation, just in Olivia Terrace alone, looks at around 100 bays and then uh, around 30 bays on, uh, sorry, on Robinson Street, my apologies, around 100 bays and Olivia Terrace, around 30 bays. So that in itself, just on the adjoining streets for the proposed 19 bay shortfall is 130 vehicle parking bays. We consider that it is a significant amount. That doesn't look separately at the existing on-street parking in Campbell Lane, or uh, on the adjoining Stewart Street, which adds around 50 bays additional. If you then consider the fact that this business has a range of land uses proposed, the commercial is the, the food and beverage, the retail and the office tenancies. They all work and effectively have peak periods at separate times of day with the, the office generally in the, the morning to the afternoon, the food and beverage and retail generally in the afternoon to late evening. Given that arrangement, reciprocal parking can be provided on site and those commercial bays could be used in a manner where uh, tenants or the commercial component could be offered to um, the food and beverage to allow for that reciprocal arrangement, thus providing additional parking. We feel that there's effectively more than adequate parking on site provided based off the demands assessment that's been conducted by Shawmap and we would seek the deletion of condition four. Ultimately, we consider that the development is consistent with the planning framework and presents an excellent opportunity for the development of a fantastic development within the town centre. We look for council support and seek the modification of condition one and condition four. 
um, and we request um, any questions be directed to either Nick uh, or myself, councillors. Thank you. Thank you, Matthew. Uh, councillors, has anybody got any questions on this? Councillor Fullerton. Good afternoon. Um, I'm Councillor Fullerton, and uh, I find this thing an excellent opportunity for the Shire. But I see 20 odd conditions on this. Are, are you happy with those 20 conditions, apart from the two that you've just done? Is there any other, any other conditions in there that you feel might be onerous, uh, a handicap, difficult to, to, to achieve, or, or, or superfluous? You're happy, you're clearly happy with the 20 that you have in this agenda. Yeah, thank you, Councillor. Yes, and um, my client is, is not your way there. We had the opportunity to review these conditions and we are, aside from those two, um, certainly acceptable to all. We believe that they are fair and reasonable conditions to be applied. Councillors, is there any further questioning? Yep. Okay. So I'm going to right along. I think there's a need to councillors to suspend standing orders and to open the table to discussion on this prior to moving forward or does anyone want to discuss it? No. No. Mr. Yeah, well, okay. Sorry, I note that Mr. Selby's provided us with the uh, with the um, the conditions, the amended, proposed amended conditions, uh, councillors. So moving forward, I think there's... Why not move the motion, sir? Councillor Fulham, you jumped the gun, yes. You may move the motion, Councillor Fulham. Which one? That they go on block? Uh, so I don't see any requirement to um, substitute one with the other because there's an amendment of clause one, which is by changing the letter two to four and simply deleting clause four from the existing so as provided yeah essentially that's what it becomes yeah, yeah. yeah. so you're, you're moving the modified if that's how you, you want it to be sir i can move the motion and simply no. put those two amendments yes okay. that's what i can move that motion and simply make these two amendments okay be the best one okay so you're moving you're basically moving this amended motion, essentially. Thank you. Do I have a councillor moving a second of that? Councillors, is there any debate? Sir, we have waited probably 30, 40 years, 50 years. I don't know how long for this, this to, to come. And I'm so grateful these people have turned up. Make, make no bones about it. Maslin's father was the guy who came up with the idea, let's knock down the old courthouse, shift it up to the trader's place and get a good place for the development such as this and he did and he got in a lot of trouble for it but that was visionary and this is part of that vision and i for one am hell-bent to bend over backwards for anything these people want as far as i'm concerned they get it. and they do not need any obstacles or bureaucracy or bits and pieces to get in the road of this this development that we're so lucky to have so therefore, I strongly recommend this motion with the four years and delete the uh, car parking bit that uh, our friend here has, has explained over and over and over again. It's time to take away obstacles. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Fullerton. Councillor Fullerton, as the mover of the motion, are you happy to do the three-part the three part motion at, on block? They're all simple majority. They're all simple majority. They're all simple majority. Yeah, the fine. Yes, yes, okay. Um, Councillor Langley is the second that you're happy to do that as well. Thank you. Councillor, no, is there any? Oh, sorry, Councillor yeah, Maslin. Yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Councillor Maslin, if you're happy, yeah. 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 Sure you're not in your head. So, because there's a variation to the officer's recommendation, mm -hmm. are councillors happy with the reasons provided for the variations, which are at the bottom, bottom of the after part three? They need to be, I, mean, we, I think, we need to be comfortable with those reasons for the variation. Mm -hmm. So everybody's comfortable with those reasons. 
Thank you, those councillors. Are there any speakers against the motion? Any further speakers for the motion? I'll put it to the vote, councillors. All those in favour? Aye. Councillor Vandeleur? Yes. Yes, thank you. It's unanimous. Thank you, Mrs Hill. Councillors, with that, I thank you all for making the effort to get here today. Um, it matters for which the meeting to be closed to the public. There is no matters for that. So we'll put the um, email on that. Um, with that, I'll close the meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And, and Nick, thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Nice. Thank you, Councillor. Nice. See you. Thank you. Cheers, guys. Right. Now, Councillor.